God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the ferment. And divided the waters which were under the ferment, the waters which were above the ferment. And it was so. And God called the ferment heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. <laughs> God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called these seas. And God saw that it was good. It is wrongly perceived by the mainstream media that there has never been an official report of a UFO by any NASA astronaut. This is simply not so. Since the early experimental orbital craft were developed by ex-Nazi SS officers on behalf of NASA, American astronauts have continually reported strange UFOs. In many cases, photographs, and even film was shot of these mysterious, unidentified flying objects. During his pioneering orbital flights in the Gemini 7 capsule, NASA astronaut Jim Lavelle clearly alerted mission control of a bogey at 10 o'clock high. Capcom at Houston asked James Lavelle if he had an actual sighting of a UFO. Lavelle answered, we have several, an actual sighting. On the 4th of June 1965, astronaut James McDivitt reported seeing a cylindrical shaped craft. Could this be one of the cigar shaped motherships which have been filmed from the ground on many occasions, most notably in Russia and California during the 1970s? former astronaut Gordon Cooper has publicly stated that his interest in UFOs was one of the reasons why he became an astronaut in the first place. In 1978 Gordon Cooper attended a meeting of the Special Political Committee at the United Nations General Assembly in order to discuss the UFO phenomenon. In a letter signed by Gordon Cooper he said I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets. 
In 1951, I had the opportunity to observe flights of UFOs of different sizes flying in fighter formation from east to west over Europe. In a tape-recorded interview given by Cooper in 1973, he stated, For many years, I have lived with a secret, in a secrecy imposed on all specialists in astronautics. I can now reveal that every day in the USA, our radar instruments capture objects of form and composition unknown to us. In 2002, astronaut Scott Carpenter was interviewed by the late Graham Birdsell of the British UFO magazine. Scott Carpenter and his fellow veteran astronaut friend John Glenn both witnessed strange creatures in space during their pioneering flights. Now, there were so many unknowns in the early days. And this is a fact of the matter. We were really not sure after John flew whether or not there were critters, living critters, out there somewhere. Yes, we have some, not thousands, some cases when Russian astronauts watched objects. Yes. Very, maybe few, not so far from the space station. Mostly over the Earth, very close to Earth, but it doesn't matter. From outer space, you can see it as if it's very, very close to you. And I talked to Musa Manarov, and I talked to Gennady Strykalov and the other astronauts, and they m told me that they have seen much more cases of UFOs, but without possibility to film it, because he said, it's always like with Russians. When you see something, whether this camera is without battery, or with battery lying at the other end of a spacecraft, or, uh, as Musa once told me, I see strange, interesting objects, but at the same time, a spacecraft is coming to me and I need to dock it, and I can't leave the place and film it. When they, it is, I mean, when they meet a person, they take from a person kind of an informational hologram. This hologram, which any human being have, um, contain in itself information about previous lives, about present life, and some, something about possible future. They take this hologram, informational hologram, and then to be able to read it, to decode information, they need to have a special key. This special key is the th sample of your way of thinking. For this reason, to have this key, they somehow transmit into your brains a hard idea, like, just an example, you are living wrong. You broke our laws on this planet. This is the reason why very soon when the, da when the sky became dark, thousands and thousands of people will die and only few of them will stay alive. And at this particular moment, when a human being starts to analyze this, this information, they just read it, you know, like they take it like a, from a computer. Hops, that's it. They don't need anything. They take this hologram, they take this key, and then keeping this hologram anywhere there, they can have any information about a human being and what's going on with him and his surroundings. <laughs> 